this is on the cool part a podcast brought to you by no one that's because we don't have any sponsors yet um but we're excited about that you know and we think it's an opportunity if you're a young entrepreneur in dominica you have a good product a good business hey hit us up tell us about it send us a little message a voice note something and we will tell others about your business at no cost so no sponsors but we will tell others about what you're doing so it's a good opportunity i want free bakes to... i want free bakes jason wants free bakes so whatever you're making jason send something for jason and we'll tell others about what you're doing my name is ray francis um i'm a host on on the cool pot i'm here with jason there is an i in team timothy <laughs> jason, what's going on man Hey, good night, Ray. Why? You know it is already taking it as it comes. Yeah, yeah alive, yeah. happy. Yeah. Today, Jason, we have a great topic. I'm ready to get down and get into action. Today, we're going to talk about. You ready to lose? I'm. <laughs> we'll see about that. We want to talk about the top five natural sites in Dominica. Your top five, my top five natural sites in Dominica. And I want to emphasize, we want to set this sort of like the ground rules, right? By natural sites, it has to be completely natural, not man-made. No, it could be enhanced, like they build a road to get to it or, or something like that. But it cannot be, you know, old mill cultural center because that was all built by men. Or it cannot be the cross on Monbrus because, you know, that's not man, that's not natural. So that's the premise of the thing. Your top five Dominican sites. I am more or less with you on your top five, but I will say in advance, mm -hmm. there is one of my top five that straddles the lines of your rules. But when I say it, we'll discuss if it's <laughs> we'll authentic see. or yeah. if we are just right out. Well, hopefully that's not your number one. We'll just have to throw it <laughs> your number one then. <laughs> that's how you want to win? Yeah. Okay. So I'll start with my number five. Best sites in Dominica, Scott's Head. The two in Scott's Head, number five best site in Dominica. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> 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 it is an interesting choice. Well, let me, um, let me make the case. Okay, that, that, okay, that's fine. Make your case for Scott's Head. Okay, cool. Let me make and my I case. Will say, and I will say, the Scott said is might be in my top five. Okay, but let me make my case for Scott said. Right, I, I put Scott said at number five, and I, I give Scott said several points for, for many important reasons. One, the two in Scott said is accessible. Right, you could go there seven o'clock in the morning. You could go there ten, eleven o'clock at night. Some fellas <laughs> like the night team <laughs> on the natural sites. <laughs> <laughs> But it's easily accessible, right? It's a good spot for a moonlight, for a picnic, for families, for friends, whatever. And then I feel like every island I go to has, uh, you know, like an iconic spot where everybody goes and they take a picture. Once you see that picture, you identify, hey, this man was in Antigua because you could see English Harbor below him. Or this man was in St. Kitts because you could see Timothy Hill. He's on top of Timothy Hill and so on. And I think that's what Scott said is first. It's iconic. It's accessible. And I think it's time the people of Dominica put some respect on the people of Kashaku name and give Scott the props it deserves. Number five. On <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, I respect your opinion for now. Um, I think maybe as we go through your list, I may end up saying that I think Scott said should be a little higher on your list because I actually think you might be selling the area quite short. Now, my number five is going to be a shocker. Um, and I foresee much argument and debate, not necessarily from you, but from our listeners, followers. Okay. My number five is the boiling lake. <laughs> <laughs> And in your passport. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I can see the disdain from, as you would say, from the populace. How can you have boiling lake number five? Well, the, you know, the, the case for boiling lake is easy to make, but I'll let you make it. Tell us about boiling lake at number five, Jason. 
Well, I think a lot of people would want it higher on the, the list. And I think right. that is where the problem is going to ensue. I actually yeah. think the Boiling Lake as an attraction is almost an overplayed hand. Mm. Um, it is a interesting sight. Um, it is also a two-hour hike. And it is not the only boiling lake in the world. It is said to be the second largest. Um, mm -hmm. I believe the first largest is in New Zealand. Correct. And um, just by virtue of that, of there being many others like it, um, and I would say the difficulty in getting to it, it doesn't inspire me with that wow factor that it is associated with. Um, and actually, I think part of me just included it in the list because I didn't want to lose my past. Oh my goodness. So in other words, you <laughs> thought that that boy Nick could perhaps be even lower than number five. I actually did. I actually did. Well, I, I will agree with you on a couple of things about Boiling Lake. One, I think Boiling Lake is also iconic. If you see the Boiling Lake, you, it also tells you about Dominica instantly. But the problem with Boiling Lake, I agree, is it, it's too hard to get there. You say it's a two-hour hike, and that's perhaps for highly experienced um, hikers. I know on average, you say it could take up to three hours to get there for average hikers, right? And no, I think it's I think it's just fit. I think it's just fit. So you know. Right, right. Don't right. sell yourself short. Don't <laughs> sell yourself short. Not because well, it took four hours. Well, when I know when I did the boiling lake, I did it in under three hours. But to be fair, that was I was seventeen at the time or eighteen. So that was <laughs> <laughs> there was a lots of things I could do. I could do much easier then. Um, but that aside, boiling lake, I agree. The trek makes it unattractive, even if it's a fantastic site so i will agree with that but i think it should be a little higher on your list because it's the second largest boiling lake in the world and as inaccessible as it is in dominica it is the most accessible one in the western world so that if you live in north america you live in the caribbean and you want to see a boiling lake hey boy you have to go all the way to new zealand to see a boiling lake so tell me what's so great about looking at a boiling lake because, because it's because. exhilarating. I mean, I remember doing that hike, going through those mountains, going through Breakfast River first, the Valley of Desolation, getting to the lake, and all your aches and pains just dissipate when you see the lake. It's it's majestic. I think you're it's crazy. Really not the lake that has big. to be higher than number five. It's really not that big of a lake. Um, it's more like a boiling pond. If what? You... what? Yeah, yeah. If for the islands. It is considered a lake. And let's analogize this to rivers. Right. What we call a river in Dominica is actually a stream in the US. Well, a stream in a lot of other places. So by calling it the boiling lake, we are sort of stretching. That's what I'm saying. It's more like the boiling pond. Either, either way, but the point is... Whether you call it a pond or a lake, the point is there's only one on the entire planet Earth that is bigger than it. So its size is significant from that standpoint, right? It may not compare to a freshwater lake, but it's the second largest of its kind in the world. So that makes it significant in size. So I, you know, I put some respect on Boiling Lake name, man. I'm to miss Sarah. <laughs> anyway, well, let's move to my number four. No, let me give you my number four first. <laughs> My number four is Boiling Lake. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, I promise, my friends, listening, we did not plan this. <laughs> and everything you said about Boiling Lake, I just want to say copy and paste number four. Because as great as Boiling Lake is, it's the sort of a place where, as a Dominican, you say, yeah, I've been there once in my life, I'm not going back. Yeah, it's exactly. one boiling lake and you're done with that business. And so I think that takes away from the attractiveness of the site. Agreed. Agreed. Because, I mean, I remember when I did it, I was in college also. Mm -hmm. And after I did it once, I vowed unless there was money involved or I was possibly going to marry her, I wouldn't go back to boiling lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... All right, well, I guess we've discussed Boiling Lake ad nauseum. Yeah, yeah. So we'll go to my number four, which is Champagne Reef. Ooh. 
Ah, you didn't. By, by your reaction, I can tell you maybe did not think of champagne reef. No, I did think of champagne reef, and I, I cheated a little bit. I have my top five, but I also have a couple honorable mentions that didn't make the cut. <laughs> uh, but tell, uh, tell, us about, tell us about champagne reef. Now, why I think champagne reef deserves to be in the top five? Because I have not heard of anywhere else in the world that you can go and safely dive or snorkel and have these bubbles like champagne coming around you. It is actually a really magnificent and quite impressive sight for any snorkeler or diver. Um, even the marine life when you're snorkeling there is is quite, it adds a lot to the atmosphere of being down there. And I think it's one of those underappreciated sites by Dominicans. It is actually something which foreigners tend to be a lot more impressed by than locals. Yeah, I, I hear you. And I agree with you on that one, Jason. I, I mean, champagne, so I'll just declare now it's not on my list. And it, it, it is an honorable mention. And the, the diving there, I think, is, is a fantastic point. And I, I also give Scottsdale points for its diving because the diving around Scottsdale is incredible. And Dominica enjoys incredible depth a short distance from shore, which gives us amazing aquatic life available when you go snorkeling and diving, right? Which is one of the reasons why we're one of the best places in the world for diving. Um, and Champagne adds in the volcanic experience with that. And you know, I think it's a miss on my part. This is a significant brain fat on my part. I should have had champagne in my list because you're mixing the diving, the volcanic experience, the sort of authentic Dominican shoreline with the marine life, with the volcanic life. It's, it's, it's a great number four. I, I, think, I think that's a miss on my part. I'll give you points for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, would you like to go with your number three? Or should no, I why don't go you go with your number three. I'll let you go first this time. Now, this is where we start to straddle your rules a little bit. Um, because my number three is actually the Carib territory. Ooh. Now, I am not, ex I, I was a bit conflicted when I put it in as a uh, natural site, but because of the authenticity of the people, the authenticity of the handicrafts which you can get there, because a lot of places you get handicraft, but it's actually stuff made in China and just rebranded as wherever. And um, the authenticity of it is what, for me, really propels it into my top five natural sites because i mean there is still a blend of modern life but you still get that traditional aspect right there where the people are developed but they it, it's kind of they're developing their tradition so right. it doesn't get lost over time. Um, yeah. I, I think that's, that's, a, that's a great point, Jason. I, I struggle a little bit with using a people as a natural site, but I think it is a, it, it is a mistake if we forget the Kalinago people. I self-identify as Pat Kalinago. I've never done Ancestry.com to know for sure. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody in Dominica have a little Caribbean in there anyway, as you say, a little Kalinago in there. Allegedly. Allegedly, yes. <laughs> but the, the, the Kalinago territory is, and, and there's Les Kaliteche as, the, as part of the area, um, which is itself a natural site and, and is an amazing site to see um, up close. But I agree, the people, how they've sort of, um, our Kalinago people have kept and valued their culture and their way of life and brought it into the 21st century with them um, and continue to share it with others, right? And I always talk about the majestic, wonder that is the Kalinago people. You know, I was saying at work the other day, I was saying to my boss, you know, the Kalinago people used to navigate, used to navigate at night. You know, when they build their canoes, they would travel at night hundreds of years ago because they would navigate using the stars. 
Um, and that's mm. incredible to think that hundreds of years ago, our, our ancestors would navigate by stars. They didn't have GPS. They didn't have all of the technology that we did. But they could go as far north as the Bahamas, as far south as South America, Guyana, Trinidad, and those places just using their canoes. And that's amazing. And I think a, a, a spot in Dominica that captures just the, that amazing part of our history is absolutely worth seeing. I agree. And I, 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 and I think actually we do them a disservice by the way the area is treated. And we don't really necessarily help them to be better at um, keeping their culture alive or bringing their culture into the modern world. It's a bit almost like a, a second cousin kind of thing. It's not, yeah. Um, you know, and I think part of it, Jason, is we have to see Kalinago culture as quintessentially Dominican culture as well. It is not just Kalinago culture that is in the Kalinago territory, right? It is part of who we are as well, right? And we, we should embrace that. We should support it. Um, we should visit ourselves as domestic tourists, if you will, and support and support the preservation of that that piece of our history. Because it really is. It, look, it goes back for hundreds and hundreds of years. And um, I love the cassava bread. The cassava oh, bread is awesome. Oh, and oh my God! And they put a little coconut in that, and you know, yeah, yeah, good stuff. Uh, well, I, I I thought that was the only way to do it. Sorry, I haven't had any cassava <laughs> bread without coconut. So. <laughs> well, a true descendant of the Kalinago people know that there are several ways you can make cassava bread, Jason. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my no number comment. three, my number three is not as historically significant, but it is absolutely iconic as well. It's the Trafalgar Falls. Oh, give me a break, please. Number please. three is the Trafalgar Falls. Please. Trafalgar Falls does not even make it into my top five. Listen, I appreciate Trafalgar Falls as Dominica's Trafalgar Falls. But it is not that impressive of a waterfall when you go into other places and see waterfalls. Come on. Jason, I, honestly, I have to say, you're my friend, but I find you disrespectful. <laughs> and on behalf of the people of the valley, I want to rebuke you. <laughs> the Trafalgar Falls is the third best natural site in Dominica. And here's why the Trafalgar Falls is the best, third best. The Trafalgar Falls features not one fall, but three waterfalls. There's the, you know, the, the mother, the father, and the little baby falls, and so on. The Trafalgar Falls also, in the falls itself, in the, close to the falls, also gives you the opportunity to enjoy the hot water of the falls, right? And the combination of the sulfur and the hot water to some hot water is not of the water. and the hot water is not of the falls, please. please. Oh come on, it's in the, it's From, all of it is part of the same site. And, and, all of it is I'm part of saying, the experience. <laughs> I'm just saying the hot water is part of the geothermal experience. It's not part of the fall. Oh, it is I... part of the site <laughs> of the Trafalgar Falls. Ah. I, I, I think it is my humble submission <laughs> that the Trafalgar Falls is a top three Dominican site. It is easily, easy to access. You simply drive right up to the falls and take a short hike. The views go into the falls. The views when you get to the top and you look back and you see the wonder and the majestic mountains. You jump into that fresh, cold water. I mean, Jason, you must be out of your mind. And then having, having the, the knowledge that how much the valley supports and these natural sites and these rivers supports hydroenergy in Dominica and that the fact that we can harness the power of these falls and the power of moving water to power our lives, I mean, it's testament to the greatness <laughs> of the... <laughs> you, <laughs> you're reaching now. You are really reaching, Ray. You are really reaching. Um, I, look, I'm not saying the Tra Trafalgar Falls are not nice. I'm not saying that it doesn't provide great livelihood. I'm not saying that, you know, the experience is not what. But it is nothing so definitively unique about Trafalgar Falls that... Um, you couldn't find in many other waterfalls around the world. I'm sorry. I'm just, 
I, I, it's just not that impressive. It's not that unique. If you have a, full, a list of five Jason, when you do not have a single waterfall on your list, uh, so far you don't have a waterfall or a river uh, on your list. I want to see. I want to see if you will complete a list of five and not have a waterfall or a river on your list and come in and say, Boy, Lake is really a pond. Why are you standing? Facts are facts, my friend. Facts are facts. And you know what? I think this goes back to, you know what? I'm sorry. I have a standard that I, I feel we should be maintaining. <laughs> and if it falls short, I will not be compromising just because. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Well, let's, let's, let's hear your better item. Your, is that your number three or your number two? That was my number three. So let's hear your number two. Uh, um, so my number two. Cabritz National Park. Wow. Okay. Now I see some disdain <laughs> in your look, yes. and I am, and I'm, 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 I'm baffled. I'm flabbergasted. Cabritz National Park represents so much of Dominica heritage, um, history. When you talk about the French, the English defending the land, that majestic view of the bay. I mean, come on, Ray. How can you not include Cabrits National Park? You can actually see both the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean from Cabrits. You can see both the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean from Cabrits? Yes. When you last have you been there? You no, binoculars? No. no. When last have you been there? I haven't been to Cabrit in a year or two, but Jason Cabrit okay, is on okay. the West Coast. You only see the Caribbean Sea. Oh, Ray, 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 my friend, my One friend. One of our listeners I... will tell us. One of our listeners will tell us. But you cannot, as far as I know, you cannot see the Atlantic Ocean. I can't remember seeing the Atlantic Ocean from Cabrit. But to be fair, Cabrit was going to be an honorable mention of mine. The <laughs> issue for you... me is Cabrit, there are two reasons why I disqualified Cabrit, right? One is Cabrit was built up. So a lot of what we see there also includes some construction. Now that doesn't take away from the view and all of that, which is mostly the site, right? So, but I just, the second thing is a lot of the reasons why we value Cabrits has to do with a colonial past. And I, I sometimes feel like as if we place too much emphasis on things associated with what should really be a past we would want not to forget but at the same time, not admire or cherish. So we still have streets in Roseau called King George the Fifth Street, and we have Princess Margaret Hospital. And I, why would we name things that are valuable to us after a time and a people that were part of the oppression of our peoples? I mean, if somebody come and break into your house and the, the window, they smash through, you're not going to call it the Ray Francis window because there's a window I break into? Actually, we end up doing that a lot in Dominica. No, but we do. But you we should know. We because, should have... for example, an accident happens somewhere and you will refer to the corner as whoever corner. Or, like, there are a lot of things we associate that type of um, remembrance and legacy to. So I, 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 I understand your point. But I still wouldn't say that is the major reason that Cabrits is should not be on the top five. I mean, I think you can maybe argue its placement that it should be lower on the list, possibly. But I don't think you should discard its importance um, on on being in the list just because there was a little bit of a murky past. A little Technical. bit of a murky past. <laughs> I'm going to give you the opportunity to correct that. A little bit of a murky past. <laughs> you know, it, That's like saying, you know, Dominic, I have one or two volcanoes. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, you could actually say that. I mean, how many of them are actually active? So, yeah. yeah. But I'll give you my number two, which if you hated Freshwater Lake, you're going to hate this one. Sorry, if you had to draw Falls, you're going to hit this one. <laughs> it's Victoria Falls. Oh. 
the fresh water lake. Really, really, I really. Love the I, fresh my, water I, lake. I'm she sorely said, disappointed. Well, I, you know, maybe you have some memories there, and you know, that's all well and good. But nah, come on. I, I love the freshwater lake. I love the freshwater lake for many reasons. But among them is to me why it's a great site is it it is easily accessible. It has great historical significance. Do you know, Jason, that there is a hiking track around the lake? It's not a very difficult track, but there's a hiking track across the lake. The freshwater lake was also an important point on the stopover as people moved from the east of Dominica coming towards the west. In fact, you will know very well that there are some high voltage power lines that Dominic runs and it passes right by the freshwater lake, almost through the exact path that people used many, many years ago when they were coming, when they were coming west from the east. And our very same Kalinago people also used these tracks back in the day many, many years ago, obviously, and believed in things like monsters lived in the lake and you couldn't really know the depth of the lake and so on. And now the freshwater lake is becoming even more iconic. You know, we do, people do tours on the lake. It's easy to go up there for a picnic in the afternoon. You know, oftentimes the, the weather... I have yet to hear why it's iconic. I have yet to hear why it's iconic. I think it is one of the best sites in Dominica. The freshwater lake is number two on my list. And I think it is ahead of Cabrits as a destination. Oh, All right. Okay. Well, before, you, before you give us your number one, Jason. No, no. I want, I want you to give your number one first. Well, I'm, okay. I'm going to recap my top five before I give my number one. And I want you right. to. And, right. So number five is Scott said. <laughs> number four is the Boiling Lake. Number three is Trafalgar Falls. Number two is Freshwater Lake. And the number one best site in Dominica is the Emerald Pool. The Emerald Pool. I, 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 who are you? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> First you of know, all, Emerald, Emerald is a jewel. So that is just... Really? Really? <laughs> who knew? Who knew? Come on. Come on. The Emerald Pool, Jason, is... I cannot believe... I, first of all, you know what? Forget, forget my expression for Emerald Pool. How is it you're going to have a list of the top five places in Dominica and not one river on your list? <laughs> not one river. <laughs> I mean, what? Anyway, Emerald Pool, it speaks for itself. That's my, my top five. Scott said, Boiling Lake, Trafalgar Falls, Freshwater Lake, and Emerald Pool. So before we delve into why Emerald Pools should not be number one, I am going to preface my number one with some of the same arguments I'm going to make against Emerald Pool <laughs> can be applied to my number one. Okay? And okay. I use the same arguments against um, Trafalgar Falls as well. Okay. Recap your top five first. Okay. So my top five number five the boiling lake number four champagne reef number three carib territory number two cabrits national park and my number one site in dominica is actually a dive site off of scott's head because the diving there is so immaculate that it is just words cannot express how wonderful that diving is. So I, I before you continue, I really want all of our friends and so on who are listening to this podcast to know two things. One, this man is sober. <laughs> the man, hundred uh, percent. The man, uh, I tell you, know, I watch him. You know, I'm nothing drinking. And the man did a list of top five sites for Dominica, and it do have a river. <laughs> it do have a waterfall. <laughs> It do have a lake with fresh water in it. Jason, you must be mad. I don't disagree with, obviously I can't disagree with the dive, the dive in. But how do you not have any fresh water on your list? Talking about Dominica. That's our whole shtick. That is what Dominica is about. How do you not? Exactly, because it's our shtick. And that's all it is. Shtick. Uh, I disagree. <laughs> your <laughs> I words, disagree. Your words, my friend. Your words. The marketing of it is wonderful. And they are great sites. But I just don't think they're our top sites. I am not saying that they are not good. 
I, I fully acknowledge your wonderful sights. Um, Emerald Pool. Growing up, all of us go Emerald Pool. Boiling, and by the way, Boiling Lake. Boiling Lake is in my top five. Yeah, Boiling but it's not, it's not fresh five. water. It's, it's not fresh water. It's, what is it? It's boiling water <laughs> in a fumarole in the, in the base of a, of a volcano, essentially. It is not a river. It is not a waterfall. It is not a fresh water. Huh? Anyway, my number one is the Labim Dive off of Scotsend. And that is because you have this incredibly steep drop-off. Right. right off the coast. And additionally, because you have that um, mixing of the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean, you actually have a wide variety of um, marine life which exists there. And it's, it's just wonderful. And as I said, words cannot express how I feel about there. It's one of those things that you have to experience for yourself. Is at that side, Jason, do you do you snorkel or do you actually dive? No, it's actual diving. You it's can't actual snorkel. Diving. It's so, actually diving. So the, and that's one of the things I considered when I was thinking about diving and why it moved down to number five on my list is because I feel like it's a little less accessible to many people, right? You have to be a certified diver and so on to do it. If it was snorkeling, it's a little different. But if somebody comes to Dominica and they're not already a certified diver, they don't get the opportunity to enjoy that. But for those people who dive, it's great, right? It's fantastic. And I, I, I can't argue with that. I still maintain that you cannot have a list of top five <laughs> and not have a river, a waterfall, or a lake with fresh water in it. That is the Boiling is lake. Boiling lake. lake you call lake. first of all, you call it a pond. You said it is a pond. <laughs> all right. So that was what I was on the cool pot today, everyone. Um, top five things in Dominica. Just to recap, mine was Scott said Boiling Lake, Trafalgar Falls, Freshwater Lake, and Emerald Pool. Jason? Uh, my top five. The correct top five, by the way, Boiling Lake, Champagne Reef, Carib Territory, Cabridge National Park, and the Labim Dive off of Scotset. All right. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today on The Cool Pot. Again, my name is Uri Francis. Jason. Jason. No. What is <laughs> there, there Jason, is an there I is an team. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I think I need to, to get accustomed to that because, yeah, yeah that, 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 that one came out of left field and I'm impressed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. All and, right. Um, remember to join us the next time on, on The Cool Pot. Thanks for listening. <laughs>